Hey everyone, and welcome to the Beyond Life and Fitness Podcast. I'm Cheryl Patton. And I'm Megan Prince. We started this podcast as a way to connect with more people who are struggling to fit it all in. The workouts, the food, kids, work, and relationships. We know that we're not perfect, but we hope that through our struggles and our mistakes and our failures and our successes that we can help more people through their challenges and be successful. So if you want some tips and tricks to help you along your journey to be the best version of yourself, then this is it. Hey everybody and welcome. We are now episode five and we're super excited to be back. And today we are talking about the I'll be happy trap. It's a phrase that um, I've experienced, Megan's experienced, and that we definitely have heard from clients in the sense that you're going to be happy when you have your food habits and checked, you've reached your physical body goals, your finances are where you want them to be, you're in the best relationship of your life, you're living in your ideal home, you're driving the best car that you can ever drive. It's sort of the I'll be happy when, insert whatever the goal is. And the reason why we wanted to talk about this today is because it's not the best way to live your life. You're living your life in the future and you're missing out on being in the present because your brain is just so hyper-focused on this alternative future that may or may not happen and it's causing you not to be happy in the present day. You're not enjoying the journey of reaching whatever goal it is that you have set out for yourself. Um, And it's not to say that it's not important not to have goals and to strive for goals, but it's learning to enjoy the process or the journey and ex- and excelling at those small daily choices or decisions that are gonna put you in a position to succeed for years rather than saying, I'll be happy when I reach X. And that goal just kind of keeps getting pushed more future, more future, futuristic. So again, the goal post just kind of keeps moving ahead. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's what we sort of wanted to talk about today. Yeah. And how to sort of stop living in the future, start enjoying more of the present day. And if you hear noise in the background, somebody is leaf, leaf, leaf blowing. blowing. Not, we thought <laughs> it was lawn mowing, but it's not. It's leaf blowing. Yeah, leaf blowing. So, um, so yeah, so that's what we wanted to sort of chat about today. Yeah, I think that we, I think in so many ways in the last four to five years, I've learned this lesson so much and like sometimes the hard way too, is that I'll be happy when sentence leaves you stuck in anything. That's when you can't move forward you can't be consistent, you can't grow, you can't learn. Um, So I'll be happy when statement so much is where people will feel stuck in life. And I think that is what I've learned the most in the last couple years is that I'll, you'll never, there's never a perfect time to start something. There's never a perfect time Um, there's not going to be a perfect day. I remember when we were having, like, thinking about having kids and stuff, and it was like, and I remember our friends being like, oh, we're going to wait until we have this much money in the bank, or we're going to wait until she finishes her test and then make sure that she has a full-time job. And I'm thinking, like, none of, not none of that matters, but the thing is, is that when a baby comes, no matter how much you think you have your life together, you do not. I remember like meeting people after we had one or two kids and they're like, oh, I'm pregnant. And they were those people, their house is always clean Mm. and they're always like all like made up and they're always like so great. And I just think, think to myself, oh man, like kind of like a little bit of a laugh of, okay, well you just wait because there's never going to be a perfect time for us to do anything. And, and I think Getting stuck in life for me is probably my most worst fear is getting stuck. Absolutely, right? It's it's the fear of not 
allowing yourself to grow and evolve, mm -hmm. which only happens during the process mm -hmm. of going from point A to point B, for mm -hmm. reaching for those goals. Mm -hmm. It's in that process of reaching for the goal that these small daily changes are made, mm -hmm. and it's these small daily changes that are made consistently that's going to allow you to change as a person mm -hmm. to become the person that you're trying to be. Right. Right? Yeah. And so you're missing out on that whole process journey piece if you're mm -hmm. just focused on getting that perfect car, that perfect mm -hmm. house, that perfect physique, that whatever it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. it can be it can be anything in life and I know um, I heard a quote somewhere and I'm not too sure where it was from but uh, it went along the lines of you undervalue what you have right now when you spend your energy overvaluing things you wish you had in the future mm-hmm right or regrets that you had in the past right and and I think if, if you look at it on a fitness level mm hmm if you took two people, one person woke up the next morning and was 40 pounds lighter, mm -hmm. and another person took eight weeks and was 40 pounds lighter, mm -hmm. the person that woke up the next morning that was 40 pounds lighter learned nothing. Mm -hmm. Their life's not going to change. No. They didn't become stronger. They didn't grow. So that person in that eight weeks of, you're right, the process of getting to the other side, that is where we grow. And sometimes... The process mm -hmm. sucks. The process is hard. The process makes you cry. The process makes you scared. The process makes you feel numb sometimes. But when you get to that other side, that's where you've learned. That's where you grow. That's where you become that different person, right? So it's like you can't, it's like you can't learn something or grow from something if it's easy. That's the thing. If it's yeah. easy, and you're just given it yeah it's like people that are rich they're just given a car when they're 16 and then the kids yes. that had to work for their car oh my gosh they're gonna know how the good value of work or um appreciating things right absolutely yeah absolutely yeah no 100 percent. and um yeah and, it, and it's not that we're saying that not having goals to strive for are not good mm -hmm. but some people will honestly delay their happiness forever because they're always thinking that the grass is greener on the other side mm -hmm. rather than again just taking a look at the lawn that you're already standing on mm -hmm. and I know there's been times in my life where my grass has been brown oh for and sure and sometimes I don't even think I had any brown grass like it literally was just soil just like dirt. and I was like what I don't even know if there's even seeds in that grass and I feel like those times are so like it's like the grass is greener and then sometimes I was like but I just need grass like it doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me I don't care if my grass is greener I just need to have any grass on top of the soil mm -hmm. so those times were so hard but then I also yeah, learned, growed, learned new things, became a different person. And yeah, so I think that the grass is always greener. I'll be happy when all those things like if you're not living in what you're and enjoying where you are right now, life gets stuck. And I was and and as you talk about that, I saw a diagram, and it'll be hard to explain on mm -hmm. over here, but a diagram, there's the future and there's the past. And there are these huge circles on the side. And in the middle, there's this circle that says the present and this little tiny circle. But the past and the present on each side are these huge golf, like huge basketballs. And then the next one down is the present is a huge basketball. And on the side, there's just these two little dots that's the past and the present. And I thought that that was such a great way to look at it because the things that should be more important, the part in our life that should be the hugest is the present moment that we're living in, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're not enjoying, if you just, if you're thinking, if you wake up in the morning, you're feeling guilty about something you did in the past, or you're like, why couldn't I change that? Mm -hmm. Or what could I have done better? Or why did I eat that cookie last night? Or you're thinking about, 
I need to I need to have a bikini body by the summer. Mm-hmm. And those are the thoughts in your mind, but you're not like, how am I gonna make today good? What am I gonna do today that's gonna like make me happy? What do mm-hmm. I need today? What friend would I wanna spend time with? Or what friend texts me and said, hey, and it just made me feel good. Mm-hmm. Like we just brush aside all the little things that are happening in our day because we're like, what's next? What's next? Mm-hmm. What's next? Mm-hmm. And I'm so guilty of it. I'll be doing stuff with the kids and I'm like, okay, thinking in my head, okay, I have to get them to boxing by five o'clock and then I got to get them home and I got to feed them dinner and then I got to get them to bed. And we're sitting there playing cards and I'm not even present. present. Yeah. So I'm thinking about what I have to do next. And yeah. I know all women, I know there's men too, but all women can attest to the fact that we have 17 tabs open on our computer at all times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 17 tabs open in our brain. Just in our brain. Yeah, yeah. just mm-hmm. in our brain. And yeah, mm-hmm. and I totally admit that. Like, 100%. There's been many, many, many occasions thinking back um, throughout 24 years of having kids, right, and trying to start up a business and get the business going where I've literally just gotten up and gone through the motions to get through the day so mm-hmm. I could get done what I needed to get done in order to move the business forward Mm -hmm. and just totally the kids were just there right right they're just there in the background doing their thing right Mm -hmm. I'm making sure they're fed I'm making sure that they're getting from point A to point B but you know conversations weren't always there Mm -hmm. um or yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and I feel like the beautiful part I feel like of my last four to five years of crazy growing and lots of pain and lots of stuff is that I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, right? I ran my own business, but I was a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. So I got so much one-on-one time with my kids. I took them to playgroups. We went swimming. We I had so much one-on-one time with them. And then when I went through a change in my life, I had to work. And I had to send one of my children to daycare, which was something my other two never had to do. Right. And then I saw how much of that took away from what I actually wanted to do in my life was just be a mom and spend time with my kids. But I felt like I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And now I'm going back to my roots of homeschooling my kids and staying at home with them. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I feel like I've seen the grass on the other side and I'm like, oh, I don't like the grass on the other side. Like the grass on the other side kind of sucks. I like I it because when you're not in, you think the grass is greener, so you try the other grass. And then it's like, oh, that's not really what I wanted. And then it's easier to be grateful for what you had before, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, Mm -hmm. that actually wasn't like that bad. It Mm -hmm. actually wasn't as bad as I thought. So, yeah. yeah. I could never homeschool. Yeah. No, not my cup of tea. My sister-in-law, my youngest brother's wife, has homeschooled for I'm not too sure how many years now. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's five kids. Yeah, that's crazy. And it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's like it's it's great that she was able to do that, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's just that's too much child time in my opinion. Right. Uh, but that's just me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just and me. I, I know, and I always thought that it was too much for me, right? Until I saw the other side of things, and I I missed being present in my kids' everyday life, and I missed. Um, yeah, just like really instilling the values that I want to instill in them on a daily basis. And I, mm-hmm. and I have so many friends that are like, oh my God, I would never homeschool my kids. Like, it's yeah. just not for me. Yeah. And I'm like, to each his own, because if you don't, if if that's not what you want, then it's going to suck, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because it's like, you're not going to enjoy it. No. Enjoy it. En- enjoy what you want to do, right? And, and on our homeschooling, we're like on the process of unschooling them right now, yeah. right? So we're not necessarily following a curriculum and we do learn about lots of things on a daily basis but it's not like we're like sitting down and doing science for an hour and doing spelling for an hour and that kind of stuff like we're learning through experience experience what they want to learn and all that kind of stuff yeah 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 I know too um like another example if we want to tie it back to fitness is when I was preparing for my first show ever so it would have been back in may of 2017 so we're going back a ways and um when i did when i finally got to the show date and got to the venue Mm -hmm. i realized how underprepared i was 
in terms of you my... You thought you were? No, no. I know I was. Oh. I know I was. I was not in a good enough condition to compete with a lot of the other competitors there. Um, and my posing was not good. <laughs> so it really, it really wasn't. But here's the thing. Okay. That was the end goal. And even though the end goal did not live up to all these expectations that I thought yeah. it was going to be... Mm-hmm. It was the process leading mm-hmm. up to that show, right? So right. learning how to train for a specific physique goal, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Learning how to eat for a specific physique mm-hmm. goal. And so it was that experience, like it was that experience, that journey from mm-hmm. point A to point B, even though reaching that goal kind of sucked, mm-hmm. but I still went back and did it again. Um, but yeah, it was that journey that was like, oh yeah, okay, this is kind of fun. So Mm -hmm. let's see how I can go back and do it again Mm -hmm. and try and be better at it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that can be like for, for anything, it can apply to your relationships in your life. It can apply to your finances. It can apply to, right. It's sort of, you know, like. Mm-hmm. What kind of goal do you want? Or you're trying to achieve. What are the steps you're going to take to get there? But enjoy the steps getting from point A to point B, mm-hmm. right? Like watching that certain bank account grow so that you can go on a dream trip with your family, or watching you know, your bank account grow so that you can actually get a car that is safe and reliable, or mm-hmm. whatever the case might be. Right? Fill in any type of any type of blank. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I think the going back to I'll be happy when is like if you lose that 30 pounds, if you have that house, if you have the car you want, if you have the job you want, the thing that I've learned the most is that all of those things also come with other things. Mm -hmm. So even though you have that house, they got that big house because you made all this money, When you get there, it means that you're going to be working more. It's going to mean that somebody has to clean that house. It's going to mean that you have to furnish it with more furniture. Like, so you'll be happy when you get there, but then you get to there. And I I thought to myself, oh my gosh, when my kids go to school and I have the kids out of the house and I can start my career and all that stuff. And then I did. And then I got there and I was like, oh crap, but this isn't what I wanted. This is what I thought I wanted. But then I got there and I was like, this isn't what I wanted. So all of the things that we think in our head of, oh yeah, I'll be happy when, you get there and then you're like, shit, this isn't, this is not what I thought it was going to be and this is not what I thought I wanted it to be. So for sure, living in the present, I think is like so huge because then you're not focused on an outcome. When you're focused on an outcome of something, right? Yes, you'll get so... Um, hell bent on it just has to be that way and you're so trying to control the outcome and my faith like and religion and my faith in God is so strong now that I just feel like this inner peace of everything is just going to happen as it's supposed to and I don't Mm -hmm. like force anything anymore Mm -hmm. I used to be that person that was like always trying to make things happen and and you know like it had to be this way and if it's not this way then I'm not doing it and yep. I was so like stubborn almost yeah. maybe uh could be well could be seen as maybe stubborn but it could also seem as a little bit more just again like you're trying to control the environment to the best mm-hmm. of your ability so then you know how it's going to end mm-hmm yeah, yeah, because I didn't like the unsafeness of not knowing how it was going to end. Yes. And, and and as we talk about this, like, I met my ex-husband when I was 16. And I remember we went on a date. And, like, that night I was calling him to be like, are we boyfriend or girlfriend? Like, what's the thing? Like, I literally was just like, w- I just need to know now. Like, it's just like you needed to be in this safe place and you need to know the outcome. Meanwhile... You can't know the outcome of anything. Like, even if somebody said to you, you know, like, I mean, people get divorced. They say, I'll be with you for your whole life. And then you're like, you broke your promise. But you're like, but the thing is, is like, things change. And you can't control the outcome of stuff. So I think learning to live in the gray area, which I don't like gray areas. Being comfortable. Being comfortable. In the gray. It's a little scary still. 
but I feel like I've just given up things and I just live in that gray area and be grateful for what I have every day. And when I have gratefulness, then I don't get scared of what's going to happen in mm-hmm. the gray area. Mm-hmm. Like gratefulness is like the whole gratefulness and faith is like my two words that just carry me in the gray area all yeah. the time. Yeah. And then I don't have And to. I'm going to, I think too, and again, you can let me know your opinion on this too, mm-hmm. but I think just based on the uh, social media materialistic world Mm -hmm. that this world has become Mm -hmm. the whole concept of keeping up with the joneses (laughs) has just it's just exploded Mm -hmm. more so than it ever has before in the past yeah right so people see oh I yeah oh I should maybe start trying to look like this and Mm -hmm. we've touched based on this before in Mm -hmm. another podcast you know trying to um uh, have yourself fit into somebody else's mold so that you can mm-hmm. be accepted, mm-hmm. right? As part yeah. of a group or as part of society or a social group or whatever the case might be. Um, and yeah, I think that's and and you see, you know, the kids and the teenagers. This is what they're seeing as kind of the standard mm-hmm. or the bar that they have to reach Mm -hmm. and if they don't reach that bar then how can they be happy with who they are Mm -hmm. yeah and I think maybe if it's after 40 years or whatever of trying to keep up with everybody all the time I just hit a wall and I was like I am so exhausted all the time like trying to keep up with all these people all the time and we were watching I let my daughter actually the other night because I never let them watch really anything and it was just her and me and she's almost 12 and so we were like, okay, let's just watch something like sort of. She just kept asking me. So we watched the first episode of the comeback of the Kardashians. And I and then we were both <laughs> watching it and we were like, oh my God, like I can't even watch this. Like we both turned it off like halfway through because we were like, nobody can be like that. And we both just like, it's so the, the um, things that are set on people, the bar that's mm-hmm. set right now is like so high it's so unreachable and i'm just like oh my god i just want to wear yoga pants and a and a ponytail every single day like that's just me and so i think it just becomes when you get exhausted for your whole life of trying to like keep up with all the people like keep up with all the things when you finally let that go it's just like Mm -hmm. oh i can breathe well i know some people too like they'll watch like housewives or whatever county or Mm -hmm. like Anyways, there's 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 a kazillion reality shows out mm-hmm. there. I think some people watch it to make themselves feel better and think that their <laughs> lives really aren't that bad <laughs> compared to yeah. what's going on on that show. But then you're like, well, how much of that show is real? How much of that show is actually scripted? Mm-hmm. Right? Because unfortunately, scandal, drama, that's what sells. That's what draws people mm-hmm. in. Yeah, and, so, I, and I loved in part of it because they've been off for I don't know how long. I used to watch them like a long time ago. The, the Kardashians? Kardashians? Oh. Yeah, and oh man, they had so much drama. And um, they were actually talking and they were saying, you know what? The last couple of years has been really beautiful because we haven't had cameras in our faces. We haven't had like people um, around us and 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 because the drama almost just has to happen, right? So yeah. they were like, no. See the grass, yeah, I'll be happy when we have a TV show. And they're like, we weren't happy at all. We actually liked it when we didn't have one. Right. So, the, yeah, the I'll be happy when, I'm telling you, like we said it last time, I was 118 pounds and 8% body fat. And I was like, oh, when I get there, I'm going to be so happy. You were so small. And I looked in the mirror and I still was like, oh, my God, why do I have this role here? Like, what's right? this thing? What, yes. what does my leg look like? This? I need to have more shoulders here. I need to do this. So... There is a thing, like, what if you just accepted yourself as you are now? Because what I see happening when people accept themselves as they are now, that's when things start to change because they're not hating themselves. Yeah. They're like, oh, now I will wake up and have a smoothie or now I won't eat that other piece of cake because I actually just accept who I am now and I love who I am, so I want to treat myself better. Right, and as you continue to treat yourself better, making those small changes is, is, so is what's going to get you to that bigger goal if yeah. it happens to be something to do with like your physique or whatever the case might mm-hmm. be right so and yeah that's the whole thing is 
not using the I'll be happy when, but mm-hmm. saying it will be great when I reach this goal, mm-hmm. but I'm going to focus or I'm going to pay attention to what's happening day by day and learn the lessons that happen along the way. Because again, mm-hmm. like your identity will start to shift and you'll start to become that person that you want to be because you're making these small daily mm-hmm. consistent changes. So it's not like you're waiting for life to happen. You're actually living it. Like you can actually mm-hmm. live happily every single day and it's finding that happiness or that joy in your daily struggles as you reach Mm -hmm. for whatever goal it is that you have set out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the biggest thing that I started saying to myself is instead of I have to do this, because I say to my kids sometimes, Mm -hmm. oh my God, guys, all day long I've taken you guys out and we've done this and we've done this and we've done this and now mommy just wants to go to the gym and my daughter goes, mom, you didn't have to do any of that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I didn't have to do any of it, but I wanted to. So I'm like, oh, I have to stop saying that because it's not that I have to to do something it's I get to do it I don't have to go to the gym yeah. I get to go to the gym mm-hmm. and you know as I'm dealing with a really like really severe back injury right now I'm so grateful for being able to just go for a walk right now mm-hmm. so then it it humbles me back to this place of your health your fitness all of your stuff your money even we've noticed during COVID all of the stuff can get taken away in five seconds yep. and so if you're waiting for the perfect time to do all this stuff, like it's never going to happen. We can't predict that. So if right. we live in the future, live in the present, or live in the future. <laughs> if we live in the present, yep. be grateful what we're, for what we have and say, I get to instead of I have to. Yep. Like that is gold. 100%. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, it is. And it's, yeah. And it's, and it's hard for people. And, I, and again, it's taken you years so many years right? and it's so taken many mistakes. Me years and we're still working on it. I think it's a never ending yeah. self project. Yeah. So many mistakes all the time. Yeah. Like I do shitty things all the time. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I can't do that again. Or I need to change that again. Or yeah. I need to rethink that again. So, right. Yeah. I think it's just um, it's loving yourself, forgiving yourself, and learning from mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's a perfect place to end. I think it's awesome. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks, everybody, for listening today, and we truly appreciate you. And let us know what your biggest takeaway was today and if you have any questions you want answered on the podcast. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast to automatically receive your episodes and to help us reach more listeners. We would love to connect with you on our socials, either Facebook or Instagram with links in the show notes. Till next time, keep taking those small steps towards your best life.